All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new on here, hey, I'm Robert, and on this channel, we always look very deep into technical details. Today, I will show you how to set up an SAP communication arrangement to make outbound calls to external APIs that require authentication. You will learn how to call these APIs with ABAP. I will show you a real-world implementation, the Global Text ABAP client that I've built to request indirect tax rates like value-added tax, goods and services tax, or US sales tax for any location in the world from my Global Tax as a Service REST API that runs in the Google Cloud. Eventually, you will see how you easily can convert the received data with ABAP JSON path into data formats that can be directly used in SAP S4 HANA or SAP BTP. But before we start, if you want to meet me in person here in Vienna, or if you're interested to do a project together anywhere in the world, just reach out and we can discuss things over a glass of my excellent Blue Frankish wine that comes from one of the best wine regions in the world. If you like this content, consider giving a like and subscribe so you guys can keep up to date with all of our videos. Now, without further ado, let's get to it! Okay, as always, let's start with a live demo. As you can see, I've opened my Eclipse editor yet. I've opened four tabs here. The first one contains the executable class GTEx usage samples. The second one is the GTEx client class, which basically is the ABAP client that you call if you want to get tax rates. This class internally calls methods that are located here in the GTEx rates class in the third tab that implements the GTEx rates interface here in the fourth tab. Here you can see that this interface defines a structure for tax rates queries that we also use here in the samples class for performing tax rate queries, for example, to this address. In this sample here, we set an address from the United States to a variable TR query, which is defined as follows. This private variable TR query stands for tax rates query, and it is of type TIF GTEx rates TS tax rates query that we have defined here in this interface. I split the screen so that you can see this together. Now let's scroll down in the sample class. Here in the sample class, I implement the class runner interface so that I can output the results directly here in the ABAP console below. For this purpose, I call the GTEx client method here, which is implemented here. So I should mention that GTEx stands for global tax. And here you can see that I create a new object of the GTEx client. The GTEx client object is a type ref to the GTEx client class, which we can see here on the right hand side. However, since the GTEx client class implements multiple interfaces, not just the GTEx rate interface that we have seen here, I cast the GTEx client object to the GTEx rates interface in this line. So now I can use this newly created GTEx rates object to call the get rates method in this interface. You can see its definition here in the right hand side. As parameter, I pass in the tax rates query here that we defined earlier, and we receive a JSON string, which is of type string. The receiving variable here in the sample class is called tax rate JSON. And here you can see that I output this JSON string followed by a new line. So if you want to activate the sample class, you press Ctrl F3, and then you press F9 to execute it. I press F9 to execute the sample class. And as you can see, it gives us this JSON string here. As you can see, I've opened the receive JSON string in Visual Studio Code so that we can see the structure a little bit better. But in a real world scenario, you usually don't want the JSON string, but an ABAP data type, like an ABAP structure or an internal table. So in our use case, we need these fields here in an ABAP structure. 
The first field in our JSON string, text rate, contains a JSON object that itself contains the field rate that contains the combined text rates for a given address. That the text rate was combined, meaning calculated, you can see in the second field combined. In the third field, combine error, you can see if a potential error has occurred. And in the fourth field, you can see the itemized tax rates for the given address. The fourth field is called tax rates, and it is a JSON array that contains all rates for a given address that together make up the combined rate in the first field named tax rate, if applicable. So in order to make this tax rates result directly accessible in ABAP, I've created a structure for it in the interface here on the left side. Here you can see that the tax rate is of type TS tax rate, which basically is this structure here. Combined is of type ABAP pool. Combined error is of type ABAP pool as well. And the itemized tax rates are of type TT tax rates itemized, which itself is a table of type TS tax rate that again you can see here. Now let's go back to our sample class here and see how easily we can fill this data structure. All we need is JSON path. You can see that I've created an instance for it here in the constructor of this sample class. And in this JSON path object, we set the received JSON string. Next, all we have to do is to call the method getData from our JSON path object. Since we want to process the whole JSON string, we are exporting the query string variable with dollar here. And we want to receive the result in a variable named text rates combined that I've defined as a private variable here text rates combined and it is of type gtext rates from our interface and the structure is ts text rates combined as you previously have seen in the interface here ts text rates combined now let's run the second example with the upper structure here as well by pressing f9 and now you can see that this time we didn't receive the response as a JSON string, but as an ABAP structure here. But what if you don't need this whole structure, but if you just want these itemized tax rates here in a table? Well, this is very easy as well, as I will show you here in the third example. This time we set the query string for ABAP JSON path to dollar dot tax rates in order to just get the itemized tax rates here on the right hand side. And we want to retrieve them in another variable named tax rates itemized that I've defined as a private variable here above in the private section. And it is of type tax rates itemized in our interface. Let's take a quick look into our interface again and find the tax rates itemized here. As you can see, this is the table of TS tax rate. And if we run this third sample by pressing F9 again, we can see that this time we just get the table with the itemized tax rates. So in order to make all this happen, the GTAX client here internally uses the communication handler. The communication handler is another product that I've developed in one of my previous videos, how to make HTTP requests to external APIs. However, I will not cover the communication handler in detail in this video. So if you're interested, please watch the other video, how to make requests to external APIs. However, what I will show you now in this video is how to set up the communication scenario and the outbound service in Eclipse and how to set up the overall communication arrangement. As you can see, I already have the outbound service here as well as a communication scenario in order to show you the live demo. However, I will create them again, but the names without the zeros here, without the three zeros, so you can follow along. Let's start with the outbound service. 
you right click on your package, in our case it's ZGTEX, then you choose new other ABAP repository object, then you filter for outbound service, and then you click next, you, you click outbound service here, then you click next. Then you enter a name for your outbound service. In our case, it's ZGTEX OBS, a description, which is in our case, GTEX outbound service. Here you enter the service type of the service that you want to request. In our case, it is an HTTP service. Therefore, we choose HTTP service here. Please note that the suffix rest gets appended here to the name of the outbound service. Then we hit next and finish. Next, we create a new communication scenario. Again, I will create one without these three zeros. So I right click on my package here again. I hit new other repository object. And then I hit a filter for scenario and I choose communication scenario. As a name, I enter that API GTEx communication scenario without the three zeros. And as a description, I type GTEx communication scenario. Then I hit next and finish. Here below you find four tabs, overview, inbound, outbound and authorizations and you click outbound. Here in the outbound services section we hit add and here we choose the outbound service which is ZGTEx OBS REST. Then we hit finish. Next we have to publish our new communication scenario. We do this by clicking publish locally, here the publish locally button right above my head. Now that we've created the outbound service as well as the communication scenario, we switch back to our GTEx client and here we find the private variables scenario ID and service ID. We change the scenario ID to our new scenario ID without these three zeros. And we change the service ID to our new service ID without these three zeros here as well. Then we press Ctrl S for save and Ctrl F3 to activate it. Next, you have to set up a communication arrangement in SAP s hana or in SAP BTP. In my case, I show you how to set it up in SAP BTP. First, we set up a communication system for our global tech system, which is gt4m.com. So I click on new here on the right hand side, right above my head. And here I enter a system ID, for example, set GTEx and CS for communication system and then I hit create. Here in the hostname section I enter www.gt4m.com Then you scroll down and you look for the users for outbound communication section here. Then you click on the plus symbol here on the right hand side below my head. And here you choose the right authentication method for your service. You can choose between username and password, SSL client certificate, OAuth 1.0 or OAuth 2.0. In our case, we choose username and password. Here you enter your username and your password, and then you hit create and then you hit save. Then you scroll back here and you choose communication arrangement. Here I create a new communication arrangement as well by clicking on the new button here right above my head. Here in the scenario field I have to choose 
the communication scenario that we've previously created. In our case, this is that API GTX communication scenario and we hit create. Here I choose our communication system, which is that GTX CS. This automatically adds my outbound communication user from my communication system to my new communication arrangement. We do not have to enter a path here since this is all managed by our ABAP client. So all we have to do here is to hit the save button here at the bottom on the right side. So now we can switch back to our usage samples class in Eclipse. And here we press F9 again. And here in the console we can see the correct results again. So that's all for today. If you like this content, please click the like button, the subscribe button, and also the notification bell below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.